What's up, everyone? It's um, July 11th, 2018. I am returning from a long, week-long vacation in um, the Northeast. What's up, Jack, Ron? Whoops, just knocked that thing. Didn't mean to do that. I know I'm kind of... Uh, are you still banned on the main channel? I gotta figure that out, Jack. It's hard to find people that, uh, there's so many, there's a lot of banned people. Hold on one second. I gotta turn on some more light here because it's very green looking. I don't know if it's in, uh, if it's in full def or not, or if it's in. That's better, I guess, right? Who's this dude exactly? What's up, body knowledge? It's happening. Oh, that's kind of bright, though. Woo! Berta, you missed me in Hyannis. You could have walked to the gig. Um, drinking this weird shake, veggie shake. It's, um, what's up, Johnny? Hold on, I gotta turn down this light a little bit more. It's what, killing me a little bit here. Take out some of the white. There, that's better. A little warmer. That should be better, much better. So I'm drinking a smoothie exactly, like a. It's not protein drink, but it's um. Something like that. What's up, Luke? So, you know, you go on vacation. Um. Yeah, I'm back in Atlanta. Who who just said that? John, you were waiting for the announcement. Well, the announcement was um, was on the main channel. I sent out a community notice that um, that went out to everybody. Everybody that has a notification uh, has their notifications on on the main channel would have gotten it. They've done something a little weird with, uh, what's up, Mark? Brett, I saw Brett yesterday. I hung out with him all day. My man. Brett was was actually helping lead the discussion with the uh, all the kids that showed up. It was kids and adults that showed up. It was really great. And Brett, thank you so much. You are a natural teacher and a natural um, communicator. And it was really interesting to to uh, we were Brett and I were fascinated by and and my friend Pat later on we talked he and I talked about it, but Brett and I were fascinated by the 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 people that the kids don't know um Keith Jarrett P we said Keith Jarrett look around at each other I'd never heard of him <laughs> I was like what Gary Burton never heard of him these people at Berkeley now granted some of them were in the summer session what's up Gary yeah, some of them were young kids. There was a girl that was an alto sax player that was 14. I assume that she was there with her dad. I assume that was her dad, Brett. That's, uh, uh, that, um, but I, and never, they never heard of Gary Burton. They never heard of, of, uh, Keith Jarrett. And they never heard, most of them never heard of Pat Metheny. So, um, yeah, it was uh, not Bird, Burton, Ron, Gary Burton. Gary Burton is one of the most famous vibes players of all time, jazz vibes players, vibes players. And he taught music business at Berkeley. As a matter of fact, one of the reasons that Matheny is so successful is because of, oh, Charlie Bird, is because of Gary Burton, because Gary Burton taught Pat about... Um, Taught Pat about music business, and Pat is a was a shark, is a shark. He gave Matheny his first shot, and, and he did teach improvisation there, I believe, Jack. Brett would know that for sure. He was teaching music business, I think, in the mid-'80s, by the time I was there, but he was there in the 70s. I mean, big part of Berkeley is Gary Burton. I mean, he was... He's, I would say he's probably the most influential teacher they ever had there. He's the, uh, I always thought he's the most well-known. I'm surprised they don't have the Gary Burton wing or something, you know. But um, 
he must have retired. Uh, who knows when he retired? 15 years ago? 20 years ago? What's up, Martin? Somebody said that they were catching their first live ever. Billy W. What's up, Billy? Um, uh, but he, had, Gary Burton has records with everybody. With, you know, uh, Keith Jarrett. Just, uh, he had... Um, he had Mick Goodrick in his band. He had Paul Moshe, or he had um, Steve Swallow in his band. He had Matheny, obviously. Um, and he was, you know, he was just an institution at Berkeley. Um, Caleb, the chord subs for pop. Oh, you like that? Oh, yeah, play with Chick Corea. Ex exactly, exactly. That is an organ behind me. It's a B3, it's a, or it's an M3 with a 147. Nerd, what's going on? I'm, uh, I'm doing great. I was, uh, I was a little tired, and then I started drinking my shake here. It looks kind of disgusting, but I didn't mix it well enough, but uh, I'll do this. Drinking my um, veggie shake. Um, so... Billy W, today's video is great. Sat down and played along. There you go. Um, my chord subs video for pop songs is my attempt to use my limited influence. Oh, that is a pump organ right there, too. That's a real organ. That's a pump organ. Well, they're both real organs. What's up, Subi? My Use my influence to teach people better, you know, things to use when they're writing songs, more interesting things. Hopefully it'll seep into popular culture at some point, or at least maybe one person that watches the channel will say, oh, you know what? I'm going to try and use this there. Oh, man, that sounds great. And then maybe they'll search for a couple things. Um, Gary Burton did a recording for us when I worked for Inner Sound Roswell, Georgia, out of Roswell, Georgia. What was that, Ron? Was that... Uh, when you say intersound, was that, um, I mean, what kind of recording? Was it a 5-1 kind of thing? Was it something, uh, in, um, some sound technology that, that you guys were doing? Um, yeah, so Martin, so sneaky, right? So I'm trying to sneak, I'm trying to teach people about all these different, you know, places to go that they might not think of. So I talked about the Mu chord, which I think is the dumbest name. I'm sorry, but the whole Steely Dan thing. I have my own names for things. I try to make up names that are not just fake names. When I say a Lydian triad, okay, triad means three notes. Lydian implies a sharp four. So you can pretty much deduce that it's a one sharp four five. I think that seems logical. The mu chord is a minor seven sharp five. And, and, and some, some dude in the comments says, well, I have the Steely Dan book and they have the mu chord as a major add nine. And I'm like, bro, major add nine. Yeah, exactly. With the third and the bass. A major add nine is A, B, C sharp, E. Okay. Take the voice and go C sharp B E A, and you got this mu, M U body knowledge. I know mu. You'll see it. It's it, they have a Wikipedia entry for it. It's, it's I always thought it was kind of a dumb thing, but whatever. Um, oh, it's a Dewalt. Oh, it's a Dewalt cordless. Not a Ryobi. <laughs> it is a Dewalt though. Oh, man, got to have the, uh, got a couple of them. Um, the Mu chord is a name, is the headstock tuner of the music world. Uh, why that name? That's a very good question. Why that name? Why that one? Um, I don't know. I don't know. Okay, Luke says, if I gave you $10 million dollars, Budget, APO, full approval on one documentary. You have to try and top the defiant ones. What would you choose the theme or topic of? 
That's a good question. I have to think about that. I just, I'd have to think about it. Short for Muso. Yeah. The way they write the U is, uh, is, I guess that would be units in, uh, in mathematics. They write it with a little U with a little hook on the bottom like that. Muso. Uh, you can skip around the Beato book. Yes, of course. Greek letter, yes. With my YouTube channels, back to the pastor, keep unsubscribing you. Resub, unsuns, absub. Uh, you know, they added some features. I think that there's some bugs in this new version of YouTube. They're trying some new stuff out. Just, just keep subscribing. Um... I know who would point out Major Ed Nine, but why would he do something like that to him? He said it's in the book. Okay, yeah, it's in the book. Well, Donald Fagan talks about the core. He watches video on writing Peg. He goes into this long thing about how he was thinking of a blues, and he's going to the one chord to the four chord, then change the bass notes. And it's like, okay, come on. Come on, Donald. It's just a, you know, one, flat seven, flat three, flat six, or sharp five, however you want to say. Minor seven, sharp five. It gives you the correct voicing. Um, so I figure if people learn some of these chords, that they might write some great songs with them. And it'd be, if I can have any influence on anyone in, in, that, uh, in those regards, then great. Um, Night Flight is is a TC is one of your test audio albums, man. That was that was a test audio record for for people for years. It's amazing. Um, Steely Dan was always one of those, but they you know they had pretty dry records. They're really punchy, very well recorded. Every they had all um, all studio players playing on them, so all the sounds were great. So of course the record sounded great, you know. Um, so a few things of interest, maybe, maybe not of interest to you, to you all, but you guys that follow the second channel, I don't ever promote this channel, uh, but, um, I had, I'm having my best day ever on my channel, on the main channel today, since the beginning of my channel, um, I have the most views ever in a day, bumping up on 200,000 views on my channel for a day, which is a lot. For me, that's a, that's a real lot. And I'm over, I'm probably 2,300 subscribers. I think I'll have my most subscribers, close to my most subscribers ever for a day. But I'm, I'm at 26,500 or 426,500 subscribers. And I figured out that I was talking to a buddy of mine and he said, you just hit 400,000. I said, you know, I hit 400,000 on the 23rd of last month, which is 18 days ago. So I went from 400 to 426 and a half thousand in 18 days. So I'll hit 430 this weekend. Um, and if I keep at this pace, in uh, 30, no, less than 30 days, I will hit 500,000. They don't give you a trophy. Um, that's pretty, pretty ridiculous. So yeah, so this is my most subs or most views on my channel I've ever had. Um, that Martin, um, the... Marvin Gaye video uh, is done. Um, the Ed Sheeran Marvin Gaye video is done incredibly well. The lawsuit video is 300 and something thousand. Um, and I mean, every, all, all these videos I've done lately, a lot of these videos have, uh, have done incredibly well. So thanks to everybody out there. Um, My channel's interesting. 
uh, to people like you who don't even play an instrument. There you go. Well, that's that's the that's the idea is to, you know, it, it reach as many people as possible. We call that half a million, five hundred thousand exactly. So you know, I got to just double that to get to a million. Uh, no, they don't really have bots on here, Chris. They have bots, but they clean them out all the time. They clean them out a couple times a week. There's definitely bots, no question about it, but um, but very few, very, very few. Um, a lot of YouTubers notice that that they when you have, when you don't have a lot of subscribers, you'll notice that that you'll look at your YouTube channel sometimes and or you'll go to, to you, you'll notice that your subscribers just go down just out of the blue, they, they go down by 200 or something, and that's them getting rid of bots. But Google's good about it. Twitter's bad about it, Google's good about it. Uh, you know, Google doesn't, or YouTube, they don't, they don't need to have bots. They get tons of, uh, tons of people watching stuff. Um, you bought your wife a digital piano, well, there you go. Um, <laughs> Brett, the, the uh, it was it was fun. It was funny in Berkeley. I was um, I told Brett that when I got to the when I flew into Logan, so we flew into Logan in, in Boston, and we go into the terminal, and my wife and daughters, my daughters had to go to the bathroom. And they go in the bathroom, and then Dylan goes in. I'm standing outside, and uh, this guy comes up to me. He's like, "I love your channel, man." I love your channel. And he walks away and Dylan comes out and then a woman comes by a couple minutes later, a minute later and says, I love your channel. Keep doing it. I say, oh, thanks. So then my wife comes out of the bathroom. I said, two people just came up and said they watched my channel. They love it. My wife rolled her eyes. She didn't believe it. I said, ask Dylan. Dylan said, yeah, I saw one of them. And, um, and, uh, and, um, and then at Berkeley yesterday, it was just, you know, I mean, if you go to, uh, do the TS TSA people recognize me? No, they, uh, they just see this old guy with, with their little, uh, little kids. You know, when I had the, the beard, this was, I always thought this was funny. When I had my long black beard years ago and Layla was a baby, we went, we were going to, uh, must've been Lennon, they asked, cause Layla was, was a baby. Uh, so I was carrying Layla with her blonde hair, and I had my big, big beard, and we're going through uh, through the Atlanta airport. And we get up to the thing, and the guy's looking at my license, and he says to Lennon, who's that? And points to me. And she goes, that's Daddy. And he goes, okay, go on. And uh, as if I was, you know, might not have been the dad wa walking, you know, with them. But... Um, Anyways, Morty is here. I'm this universe Morty, right? No, you're not. This universe is Morty, right? No. Um, no, but you could be banned from this channel because I don't know who you are. Tell me I didn't go to Cape Cod on the fourth weekend. I did go to Cape Cod on the fourth weekend. I was there. I was there on the sixth, actually, we got there. Spent two days in Cape Cod with my friend Pat, and um, oh my God, the traffic, oh God. And then we went to, um, uh, at, in Felmouth, Joseph, um, my, my buddy Pat lives in, I think it's actually called Tea Ticket, is that right, Roberta? <clears throat> Roberta, is it Tea Ticket that Pat lives in, is that the name? And then, uh, then we went to, uh, oh, Boston is the worst drivers, but I already knew that, the worst drivers. Um, then we drove, we rented a car, then we drove up to Maine, to um, Agonquit, Maine, uh, Maine. And it's probably about two and a half hours north. Um, and my in-laws rent a house Every uh, every few years, and we go up there, and um, 
spent three days there. Any of you that saw my Joe Bonamassa, John Mayer video, I made that at the house we were staying and it was extremely difficult to make a, uh, to make a video without your stuff. Uh, in Maine, oh my God, the, the traffic in Agonquit was insanely bad. Um, really, really bad. A lot of bad drivers. And, uh, you know, you gotta be careful with your kids walking around. It's, uh, you know, um, yeah, so anyways, it's not much of, for me, it's not much of a vacation. Um, I, I said to my wife, I said, I need a vacation as soon as we walked in the door. So I'm on vacation right now. Got my shorts on, sitting down, relaxing. Um, I practiced a little bit. I have a new amp back here. I don't know if you guys can see. I'm going to put my finger right there. You see the amp right there? That is an orange overdrive. It's not an adult beverage. Yeah, I'm going to get closer to it. This is why I actually am using this. Um, this is why I'm using this, my phone today. So this is my new amp. I think I talked about it last week, but I'm gonna show it to you here. Oh! I wanna tell you about it here, those of you that are guitarists. So this amp here is an orange overdrive. It's called, here, let me get it close so you can see it. I gotta take it out of my stand here. Is it backwards or not? Can you guys see that? Is it, tell me, if, is it backwards? Or is it, is it the right way? I can't play it right now. It's perfect, okay. Um, so this has an FAC knob. It's got bass, treble, presence, gain, and master, okay? That amp is, um, so here, here's the deal. Those of you that, um, it goes to 11, it sounds unbelievably good. It reminds you of things like bad finger or something, or uh, it's just, it's so creamy. It's so mid-rangey. Um, I, I, I'm gonna play it in a video. So the story is this about that amp is that back uh, it's okay. What's wrong with the stupid thing? Okay. Back in the seventies, orange started out. Um, with a, their first amp that they had, I believe was a graphic it's called. It was a 120 watt amp. Looked like that has this FAC knob on it. That has a series of seven, I guess, capacitors that change the bottom end. You know, all the way to the left is the most bottom end, and then it rolls off in each little setting that you go to. Um, so they made the graphic, then they made the the OR120. 100 watt amp, and then they eventually went and made this overdrive. This is like an OD, OR120, no, OD120, overdrive 120. Um, and that was their most incredible amp. It was like, it, it was a high gain, more like a Marshall, but creamier than a Marshall. The best amp I have in here. It's unbelievable. So I, I've owned about five or six different ones. That is an overdrive 80 watt. So uh, it's got two EL34s in it. So I was, um, so back, I told the story I think last week, but I'm going to tell it again. So I think it was in 99, I was in, um, I was at NRG Studios in LA and, um, I was, Brendan O'Brien was recording there with Stone Temple Pilots and 
Back with my band Billionaire, I was using a, uh, I had a GSM 800 that I played, that was my main amp, um, a, a 1983 GSM 800 um, with the vertical inputs. Those are those were the, the better ones because they weren't, uh, when they went to the uh, horizontal ones like this, so the in, they had the two inputs like that, those were not, uh, you're not plugging into the circuit board. The other ones, you're plugging into a circuit board. These are actually wired, right? So, they sound better. I've owned a bunch of JCM 800s, probably 25. So, uh, I heard Dean DeLeo playing when they were, you know, setting up for STP, and he just had the most amazing, fat distortion sound. And they were taking a break, and I remember peeking my head in, and I saw an orange overdrive in there. Well, that's what he was playing through. And I and I wished, I said, man, I wish I could get a guitar sound like that. So I had been looking for this amp for the last year, um, and I got a notification on Reverb that... There was one there, and it was the 80-watt version, and it had a road case that said Brendan O'Brien on it, and I bought it. Must have been the same amp. Uh, so Orange went out of business in the late 70s, and I guess the factory sat unattended for years and years. In, uh, in, uh, in 1992... Um, Gibson bought the orange name. Uh, they, they bought the orange name and I think they bought the orange factory. I'm pretty sure about this. And they had Trace Elliott, the company Trace Elliott, build them oranges with the leftover parts that were from the 70s, the same transformers, the same cases, everything. And they built the OR120 and the o Orange Overdrive. And they built them for two years, and then they went out of business again. And then later on, the Orange name was bought again, and they made all different, uh, they made all different amps, none of which sound as good as this. Although Orange makes good amps, really good amps. The, th the Rocker Verb 50 and the Rocker Verb 100. The Rocker Verb 100 is, is one of the best sounding ones. The, the AD30 is a great amp. The... Um, the 8050 is a good amp, but this blows them away. The Trace Elliott ones, which is what this one is, the early 90s reissues are made with the original original parts from the 70s. Um, and they just, if you can find them, they just they didn't make that many of them, and they sound phenomenal. So I've been looking, I mean, I, honestly, I've been looking for years, and I, I just... I, I haven't found one. This is the best sounding one I've ever had, too. So I'm really psyched about it. Um, and I'm going to do a video where I talk about it. I, I was blasting it earlier, Subi. I was actually... Um, I was actually practicing through it. And I was wishing I was doing a session with it. Um... Are there legendary guitar players who use orange? Yeah, there's a guy named Jimmy Page that used oranges. You can find plenty of Zeppelin pictures with him playing through an orange. Matter of fact, if you watch the video of um, It Might Get Loud, he's uh, he has an orange stat, he has an orange hat on top of Marsh along with a Marshall head right there in the thing he's playing through. Um, so yeah, Jimmy Page is one guy. Um, I was looking in my videos of um, when I was making the Namera video, I played, um, uh, who was it that I had? Paul Kossoff. I was looking at videos of him. He was playing through an orange, one of the orange mad amps. Um, and I'd have to think. I mean, a lot of people used oranges back then. Not, I mean, not, you know, Jimi Hendrix didn't use an orange or anything, but Jimmy Page did. And it was more a thing of people in the 70s. Um, 
you can find plenty. If you Google right now, somebody Google Jimmy Page Orange Amps and see if you find uh, if you find it. Sabbath, yes, Sabbath. I'm sure Sabbath used, used Orange Amps. So that's a 1990 reissue, I think it is. Yeah, something like that. It's early 90s, it's 90, 91, something like that. Um, budgie, I don't know what that means. Uh, Mastodon, they use orange. Okay, yeah, they use the new oranges. Jimmy ran his theremin through an orange. Um, pages on their website. Yeah, so Jimmy Page, you know, you got to look up the old people. Um, oh, Budgie was a band, don't know them. Picture found, Orange Amp indeed. Boom. Well, look, he used Marshalls too. Um, yeah, Sabbath used oranges and Laney's. Um, Sabbath used orange, uh, the Laney Clip Amps, which is an amp I used to own as a built-in fuzz. It is amazing. And I sold mine, and I wish I didn't. So I now have to find that again. It was very hard to, uh, very hard to find it. I have to admit, when you say orange, I'm thinking about literal orange. Fairly recent picture of Paige on an orange website. Couldn't find references to Sabbath using orange links. Okay. Um, but there are other people. There, there used to be a History of Orange Amps website, old website, that they had that, that was really informative uh, that you can find. If anybody finds it, send me the link to it. Um, I haven't looked at it in probably... I remember looking at it in the early 2000s. Uh, hold on here, hold on. Okay, well, there's, do you like my face, I'm an idiot. Bot. Bot. Banhammered. Partners in Time, Gary Burton, don't know that, no. Um, I banhammered. I don't even have to boom. Um... You guys do the boom. So I have the, uh, I, I've gotten my Jubilee lately and I got my, my orange overdrive. So I've kind of have the, the, I'm back to, to the, um, I backed it to having the amps that I sold that I didn't want, that I wish I had not sold. Uh, the Laney clip is another one. Um, do I like orange amp simulators? No. You send me the link on my Gmail. Awesome. Thank you, Joseph. Um, yeah, it's, um, that's the best sounding one though. And the history of orange, uh, website is where I learned a lot about stuff. Somebody gave me um, an old orange graphic amp. He said, oh, I'll give you this. Yeah, it doesn't work. A guy gave me an amp, I can't remember who it was. He gave me the amp and it worked. He said, there's something wrong with it. But uh, <laughs> some guy left it here. I was working with a band just years and years ago. And he left it, he used it to hold the door open when they were moving gear in and out. He goes, yeah, it doesn't work. And uh, he's like, oh, you can have it. So I <laughs> I let it sit here for a month or so. And I said, wait a minute, I wonder if this amp works. I plugged it in and it worked perfectly. I was saying like, what? This guy gave me this amp and said it didn't work. And it works. This is how you, know, you can imagine how smart uh, how smart this band was. He gives me a you know early uh, um, yeah Paul Kossoff playing orange definitely. Um, maybe his cable was busted. Exactly, that's probably what it was. He probably had a. Uh, um, Uh, 
Um, I'm not doing a live stream, Gene, of the master class, so you can't buy a ticket to it. Don't live stream those. Um, so yeah, um, I had that amp for a while. It did end up developing a problem. The, uh, the, the transformer eventually went after a few years. The transformer, um, I've had that happen only on a couple amps, so the transformer was going bad, but, but that amp wasn't really good. I mean, I replaced the transformer, but it, it was never really, um, it was never really the, you know, it didn't sound the same. You have to get the, you know, get those original transformers. Um, and you know, they have, so they have orange, another thing about orange. So the, the orange is a British company and they have their U S base here in Atlanta. And I was, um, I was endorsing them. I mean, endorsing them. They, they gave me an artist deal uh, and I used to go over there and play stuff, new stuff that they had. The, the warehouse is probably about 15 minutes from here. And uh, I used to know the guys there, and and um, anything new that came out, I'd go over and play. And they'd sell me stuff. I mean, this is years ago now, but I remember I bought. I bought every single thing that they made. I had. Um, it was. Uh, they they had some. I think that they they make some great stuff. I love the look of the amps too. So even though I'm not supposed to, that's not supposed to matter. But know anything about the Electro Harmonics Mig Fifty Soft Tech copies? Um, you know they're they're. I'm sure that they're good. I've never played one. I've seen them. I just have never plugged it in. Just haven't. So um. Um, they're cheap, Subi. be now if these oranges to make oranges i don't know how they ever came up with that the um but i think orange the tolex is the best looking i think those are the best looking um well i like fawn tolexes i like Mar fawn colored marshals that that's like a tan um i like um, I had a high watt, a white high watt custom 100 that looked amazing with a, with a custom 100 cabinet that had the 75 watt fanes in it. And I love that also, but the, the Tolex got stained on that by putting, uh, by putting some rubber on, uh, on it. And there's no way when Tolex gets stained, it's, um, it, it's impossible to get the get the. I never figured out how to get the stains out. When when a rubber gets on it, it it becomes part of the Tolex. You need an orange shag carpet, I know, right? But I have an orange four twelve in the other room. But I I bought that little one twelve cabinet there because it's great for um. It's it's great for uh for practicing and playing at low volumes and stuff. And walking it around. Um, status quo, white marshals. Love white marshals. I love any white amps. Uh, you know. What is Iden up to? Um, you know, I need to give Iden uh, a call tomorrow. Uh, so we had talked about him coming up next month. Come, um and doing some recording in New York and then putting on a concert there like we did last November. Um, so so I'm in the, pro I'll be in the process of planning that here over the next few weeks. So I wanna get the master class done next week. So um, so I would say, if you're gonna come to the master class, it's, it's the 21st. Um, everything's for sale on my website today too, 20% off till tomorrow afternoon at two o'clock. And the code is, I think RB746. There's also a code on the, on the, there's also one, the same thing that's on the, 
a banner on the page too where you can get everything at a discount that Aaron had put up there. So there's two different codes. It's confusing. Just but, but either one works. So if you want to buy my book, it's 20% off today. It's from the live stream. Um, and any of my courses, same thing, 20% off. So I think that's the stuff I wanted to talk about there. Questions, anybody, questions? I've said, I've said my piece. There, will there be coconut water at the master class? Yeah, probably. As I'd never expressed appreciation for rock, Iden loves rock. How do people like Iden get paid this way from Apple Music? I mean, it doesn't make any money. It doesn't make any money. Um, you don't make any money on those things. I mean, you know... Um, I have a record that uh, um, I got a royalty check today. Um, I got two of them from my publishing company. One was a dollar six cents and one was a dollar seven cents. Now, I don't know what that's from, <laughs> um, but that's actually <laughs> I didn't even know why they send the checks out it was uh it was actually they cut two checks let me see here I said to my wife I was like am I gonna cash these I'm like why bother going to the bank she said yes cash them Uh, this is from Google. Um, here, I'm going to block the uh, name out here, but you can see $1.07. And, and the other one is, oh, the other one is $1.26. $1.26. That will not even buy you, that'll buy you a small coffee, black coffee at Starbucks. That's it. But it's not even, it's pretty much not worth the gas that it takes to drive to the bank to, uh, to deposit it. What's up, Rob? Where have you been? Your my, grandma died? I'm sorry. Oh, man, I'm so sorry. Well, it's good to see you. Good to see you. Um, won't even buy me a coconut water. Well, two bucks will probably buy one small thing. Yeah. Um, do what makes us sound great on Oasis. My, my stream interrupted there. Um, I'm back. Um, so, how do bands like Avenged Sevenfold make a living? Avenged Sevenfold plays arenas. That's how they make a living. You know, they're a huge band. Um, that's how. But, you know, people that sell a few records like Iden, you know, I encourage you to go to idenessonmusic.com and buy the CDs that are there and stuff. Those will get paid actual, they'll actually get paid for. How do I get access to the, these multi-tracks? Come on, man. Are you new, Keith? Um, I. What do you mean, how do I get access? I get access. People give them to me. I'm signing off with Jimmy Herring or Derek Trucks. Yeah, absolutely. It'd be great. Um... Would I do an episode of that with what makes this song great? Don't look back in anger. I definitely will do an Oasis one. I have that song. I've got Wonderwall. Um, I have Champagne Supernova. Um, 
So, anyways, okay. Oh, and how many of you saw my new, uh, some of my new videos? My John Mayer, Joe Bonamassa video. Um, you notice that my, that I've, uh, I have all these new types of videos. My music history videos, my commentary videos. Um, you know, it's interesting because people slag John Mayer um, because of the his personal life. And he's, when I've met him, he's, you know, He's just like you imagine him. That's all I'll say. Um, I've hung out with him a few times. Years ago, though. I haven't seen him in 15 years. Um, so, John is a, an incredibly good player. He's got great time. Um, and, you know, some people are saying, oh, you cherry-picked the clips. Look, there's not... You should have taken the solo from this record. Well, yeah, taking the solo from a record, what does that tell you about a person's playing? That's not improvising. You could comp, you could work out the solo, whatever. When these guys are playing live and they're improvising, that tells you something about them. And Joe really can play a solo. But Joe doesn't really play anything that is his own. His fast licks are Eric Johnson licks. His his slow licks are any number of players from from you know Albert King, BB King, Paul Kossoff, you know Jeff Beck, you name it. Eric Clapton. Um, so. And I mean, Mare is not the most original player either. I mean, his blues playing is incredibly derivative of Stevie Ray Vaughan, which is derivative anyways. Um, but John is a much more talented songwriter. Joe Bonamassa is not a great songwriter. Um, but he's a great player. But I wish that he would get out of his, instead of playing his Eric Johnson licks, and I love those kind of licks. But it's like, come on, man. Play something. You know, you don't hear Robin Ford playing those kind of licks, right? Nobody can name one Joe song, no. Um, any tips for developing original style? Don't copy people. <laughs> that's, that's uh, you know... That's what you do. You know, if Joe, all the time he has to practice, um, all the time he has to practice and he doesn't, uh, you know, he just goes with those same influences. So, I mean, that's what he does for a living every day. People are going to be copying my licks from my Instagram for the next 20 years. Great. I definitely play some weird stuff on there. <laughs> I hope they copy them. Um, you know, I, I, um, I always tried to look for original kind of things that I didn't hear other people play. That's what I wanted to gravitate towards. Um, so that that's you know that's always been my my how I wanted to present myself. I wanted to try and present an original original style. Um so there you go. All right, so I'm good. I got to go. I'm tired. I got to go to sleep. You guys are awesome. I wanted to come on tonight because I'm excited. Uh, I came on early. I'm going to bed early. So you guys are the best. We'll talk later, okay? Bye.